good to be back here, be with all of you virtually speaking, hoping all are faring well in this really challenging times we're in, also especially to Gretchen uh, as she deals with her own losses at this time. I would offer special thanks to our videographer and visual expert, my wife Judy, and also to my granddaughter, Isabel, for loaning us her pink microphone for this recording, and also to all the rest of you who are participating in our service for today, and as well as Victor Derubius for all putting it all together. <laughs> Scripture reading today is from the book of John 20 verses 24 to 29. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
He then said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, and may he add his blessing to these words. May we know God's presence in the midst of our sharing of these thoughts in this time together. I would open with these words from A.A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh. Piglet sidled up to Pooh from behind. Pooh, he whispered. Yes, Piglet. Nothing, said Piglet, taking Pooh's hand. I just wanted to be sure of you. Pooh shared similar feelings about Piglet. Piglet is so small that he slips into a pocket where it is very comfortable to feel him when you are not quite sure whether twice seven is 12 or 22. So we've completed our journeys through Lent and Holy Week and have passed Easter Sunday. Winter is slowly ebbing and spring is in the air. And Earth Day is coming this next Tuesday. As we turn back to the reactions connected to that first Easter miracle, I think we can probably find each of ourselves somewhere among those early first responders, if you will. Now, even among those closest to Jesus and the event itself, there was confusion and doubt. Thomas, famous for being the doubting Thomas, and he was very clear in his need. Unless I see his hands and the print of the nails and place my finger in the mark of those nails and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. In each of his appearances after his resurrection, at first, Jesus is not recognized visually. Some action on his part is needed for the awakening of the connection. Mary Magdalene thought he was the gardener at first. She finally recognized his presence when he called her by name. The gathered disciples did not recognize him until he showed them the nail prints on his hands. The two travelers on the road to Emmaus and the fishermen on the beach recognized him only when he broke bread and shared it with them. Near the end of the Gospel of Matthew, after his death, Jesus says, or the story goes, now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. The problem can be understood if we consider where we turn for truth. Paul describes a certain doc di dichotomy in our nature as human beings. He writes, if there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. And Jesus offers comforting words for us as we struggle to understand what's going on. Now, once Thomas is convinced, Jesus then muses, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Given our natural proclivity to wanting proof, kind of show me attitude, we can grow weary of promises and hope and just want some good old down-to-earth concrete assurances that all is well and that we are not alone. A very big part of our angst 
in these times of tremendous uncertainty is exactly that, uncertainty and doubt. There are times in all of our lives that we will need that little extra reassurance. Doubt is a very familiar experience, and we must not ignore it or brush it aside, but address it head on. If we can discover and trust our own personal styles of knowing, we stand a very good chance of finding and receiving that reassurance we seek. As a special needs teacher of many years, my wife Judy's favorite learning style guidelines come from a theory outlined by Harvard professor Howard Gardner who speaks of multiple intelligences. Rather than just one way of perceiving understanding, Dr. Gardner suggests there are nine ways to be smart. First, the naturalist, nature smart, musical, sound smart, logical, mathematical, reasoning and number smart. Existential, life smart. Interpersonal, people smart. Bodily kinesthetic, body smart. Linguistic, word smart. Intrapersonal, self smart. Spatial, visually smart. Now Thomas, in his inquiry and challenge, showed a preference for the bodily kinesthetic. He wanted to touch those nail prints and place his hand in Jesus' wound. Mary preferred the interpersonal. He called her by name and she recognized him. Now a lot of doubters were probably stuck in the logical left brain arena, the least of the intelligences geared for faith and believing. It is simple in our nature to seek reassurance from time to time, most especially in our times of trial and doubt and fear and loneliness and complacency. We must look for reassurance first through our own personal natural inclinations, our own unique and personal learning style. One way to apply this would be in honor of Earth Day. For the naturalist, there will be a favorite and most inspiring season. For the musical, the returning bird songs. Logical, mathematical, the science of renewal and rebirth. Existential, the mood of spring. Interpersonal, relationships blossoming, bodily kinesthetic, warming temperatures, heightened aromas of spring, linguistic, the poetry and messages of spring, intrapersonal, the energy that returns to all of us and lifts us up, and the spatial, the beauty all around. Now think about those types once again. I know it's hard to remember them. Uh, you'll find it in print uh, later on in this video. So please give it a glance and figure out what your strong suit is. And not only will this help us in looking and finding God, but also it will help us in our attempts to understand and connect with one another. The elements of worship can all address these as well. For the naturalist, we always have flowers on a Sunday morning. We always have the beautiful wood in this sanctuary. The musical, our hymns and our anthems and Victor's extras. The logical, the order, the numbers, the sermon, hopefully. Existential. It's all about the deep questions of life. That's why we're here. Intrapersonal, or interpersonal, 
fellowship time, coffee hour. We love it. Bodily kinesthetic. Which pew do you sit in? The temperature in the room. The smells of church. Linguistic. Scripture. Readings. Words, a lot of words in church. Intrapersonal. Prayer. Silence. Introspection and meditation. And spatial. The visuals, the cross, the candles, stained glass windows, and the light levels in the room. So our challenge would behoove us to pay careful attention and foster positive regard, especially to the differences among us. And most acute, and often leading us into misunderstanding and conflict, will be diversity within our own families. We must resist the temptation to make fun of those approaches, approaches different from our own or suggest that one style is superior over another. Embrace them all and be fascinated by the variety of experience to be discovered in the gift of being human. These are truly the pathways to realizing who it is that has just entered our presence in these post-Easter times. Recognition of the presence of God can come to even the doubters among us. As we recognize our deep yearning for reassurance and turn to our own best learning style, while acknowledging and encouraging other styles as well, wide-scale awareness and presence will dawn. The Easter celebration is behind us. Already the feelings wane. Reassurance is needed in between our mountaintop experiences. Those little reassurances are there all the time. It's all about perspective. And as Jesus said, blessed are your eyes, for they see. Blessed are your ears. For they hear. I would close with one of my favorite religious poets, William Blake, who urges us all to stay focused in the moment. He who binds himself to a joy does the winged life destroy, but he who kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity's sunrise.
Suddenly it is spring. Dear Lord, for every individual, just like the apple tree, divine inheritance is not something that we have to obtain, but a growth unfoldment to be awakened and released. This is truly what Easter is about. Thus, spring is not some time set on the calendar. It is the open door to the earth's inheritance, the everlasting yes to life. May Christ's resurrection open the door to our hearts and minds, Lord, and spring bloom in all of its glory in each of our lives. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this opportunity to be together in whatever form or fashion it may be. May we feel the movement of your spirit among us, within us, through us. And may we know that in our own personal ways we can receive reassurance if we just have eyes and ears and hearts to see. Through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. God bless you all. Stay safe. And we'll be together again next week.